Hello guys and welcome to Till Vacuum Do Us Part and welcome to my need to know home hacks. You guys really seem to enjoy these so I've been trying to put them in at least once a month. I will say the majority of the hacks you are going to see today was sent in by you all so thank you so much for helping me out. If you ever see a TikTok or a reel or some type of hack you want to send to me make sure you're following me over on Instagram. I'll have that link down below in the description box. You guys sent all of these through my DMs. So I'm so excited to test them out for all of you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this or Amazon finds or cleaning or organizational tips. I'm here to help you all out. And I hope you guys enjoy this channel a lot. But now let's go ahead and jump straight into these need to know home hacks. Okay, so for the very first hack, we're gonna start off here in my bedroom. I feel like we don't talk about very many controversial things here on my channel. I try to stay away from that, but the pillow chop is one of them. I feel like you either love or hate the pillow chop. So if you don't know what the pillow chop is, I'm gonna show you first. I get asked about it all the time. My dad is an upholsterman, like he custom makes furniture. And so in my house, we just had a lot of rules. Like I was never allowed to say couch, it's a sofa. If we fluffed the pillows, we chopped them. So it's just so funny how like you're raised different ways. But to me, I will always be chopping a pillow, but there's a new way to chop. Have you guys heard of this? Have you? Okay, if you haven't, I'm gonna show you the original way and now the new way to chop your pillows. Okay, so I do follow Shay from Studio McGee. You've probably seen her whole line at Target and then she has a whole um, series on Netflix. If you haven't followed her, she's amazing. Definitely go watch. But the original pillow chop is where, like, say you're gonna fluff your pillow. This can be used for any decorative pillow, but you're gonna need some down in it. If it's a super cheap pillow, it's not really gonna hold its chop. <laughs> but the original way is you go like this. And so you have that really deep V and it just looks nice and tailored if you like the chop. <laughs> these are all done with like the original pillow chop now I will say if you don't like a super deep one you can do it a little less but the new pillow chop from Shay getting her credit start fresh is just a slight chop and then you pull the corners and you push back what do you guys think do you like option one or two? I'll go ahead and do the rest of them and show you some clips so you can kind of see the difference between all of them. If you're curious which style I like best, and I do want to know what you like, so leave it down below in the comments section, I prefer the new pillow chop. I will say I've done the original one for decades, so sometimes it just sneaks back in, but it is a little harsh, and so if you haven't loved the original pillow chop, I suggest trying the new one. It takes like a second longer, but it really does just add that like decorative touch because that's how decorators would stage your home. So is it needed? No. Is it a fun hack? Yes. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So now we're moving on into our bathroom and this is another hack that's like 
then versus now or original to updated. Um, a lot of you guys found me when I posted a home hacks video and I did the toilet paper stamping. Now, once again, in this hack, I'm going to show you how I used to do it. And then a ton, like I'm talking hundreds of people have sent me a TikTok video of how to do this like flower stamp on the toilet paper roll. So we're going to test that one out too. I haven't tried it yet because I wanted to test it out with you guys. So let me show you the original and then I'll show you the new one. So if you're just wanting to make a guest bathroom look cuter or you're staging your house because you're selling it or you're having company over, maybe you clean professionally, maybe you're just cleaning for a friend, it's just a super simple way to leave a special touch versus like this. Um, and keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a fresh roll. Like it can just have a little bit on it and it just kind of helps hold it in place. Um, so this is the original one. And I will say every sink faucet leaves a different design. So it's like a surprise the first time you do it. You never know like how neat it's going to be. But now on this one, I'm gonna show you the new one that everyone has sent to me. Attempt one, it's not perfect, but you get the idea. So I think if you did it a few times, it would get easier and easier. So you could perfect it a little bit. So here's the original, here's like the step up. You guys can decide which one you like. Obviously this one's quicker and easier to do and it wastes less toilet paper. So if you're worried about wasting it, this is your way to go. But if you're just wanting to make a statement and like I said, it's in your powder room that no one uses often or you're having company come over, um, I think just practice it a few times, like start doing it the week of, but it does look super cool. Um, I'll go put them like, in the toilet room on the holder just so you can see like how it actually looks in place. That's just so fun to do and it's just like the extra step to surprise somebody. It's just something small. It may be fun. Maybe you're hosting a party in your house or a shower. Um, this is also just a cute way to decorate. Say you have nothing to put like on the top of your toilet on the back of it. You could just do three of them and do any one of those styles. I know they have tons of different things you can do. Those are just the two that I see the most. Um, I will say if I was doing the back of the toilet, I would do like the flowers because I feel like it stands out and just looks super nice. Or you could do the flower on the one that's actually hanging and then do the simple one across the back. Whatever you wanna do, it's just fun and something special. Savannah occasionally will do it in her bathroom when I tell her to clean it and you just walk in and it's just like a nice little extra bonus or touch. So if you clean houses, I highly suggest doing that. But now we're gonna move on into my kitchen because I have a few home hacks to share with you in there. So the next two hacks are actually gonna involve Ziploc bags 
Once again, I haven't tried these, so it could be a major fail. Sometimes you see stuff on like TikToks and Reels and you do it in real life. And I'm like, that did not work <laughs> at all. So I love just getting to test these out so you don't have to waste your time or money, but I'm really hoping these two work because I just feel like they're super cool. This first hack with the Ziploc bags is going to involve a Ziploc bag, a cutting board, a knife, and fire. <laughs> so this is for adults only. Adults be super careful. This is a TikTok I found and I'm just dying to see if it works. So let's get started. I was so hoping this hack was gonna work and it did. Look at this. So since you're getting your knife hot and make sure you get it really warm on both sides, I did basically the tip and then cut with the tip and it like melts it, which seals it as you cut it. So any size Ziploc bag you have, if you need it to be smaller, you can just cut it. And then I have two bags. Look at like almost melted on there. <laughs> I have two bags instead of one. Now say you have this size bag and you need like a snack size, you could cut it. But keep in mind, it has to be like a Ziploc kind. This wouldn't work because of the zipper. Now I can cut it here just to see, but I don't think that would cut right. So just make sure you get like the press where you just snap it or close it like that. And then look how cute that is. You could do individual little snacks or you could just make like your original like quart size bag into a snack bag. I think this is super cool. Let me know what you think down below in the description box because that is a really neat hack. So I wanna know, are you gonna try that hack or is it silly? <laughs> Comment down below. But like I mentioned, the next two hacks, so that's the first Ziploc hack. So this is gonna be the second Ziploc um, hack. So this should work with any kind, any size, whether it's like the zip kind or like the press kind. Uh, once again, this was another reel. I'm always inspired by all of those and I'm always just curious to see if they actually work. So with this, we're gonna kind of like do an airtight bag with something in it by using water. Is it gonna work? We will find out. Now for this hack, you're gonna need a bowl of water. So I'll fill this up with water here in a second. A Ziploc bag and then something you're gonna put in it. So I'm gonna try these strawberries. They're actually looking a little rough, so don't judge me. But I think you can do this with anything, but that's just what I'm gonna be using. So let's get this started. This one's a fail. Like it did get a lot of the air out. So I don't know to say if it's a fail or not. I feel like the thing I watched, it just like clung to every little item in here. And I think they were smaller. I want to say they used like grapes. So I will say like it got a lot of the air out. Like there's no air in there. I was just expecting more of like a vacuum seal. So I don't know to label this as a pass or fail. You try it out. Let me know if you've done it before. I feel like it definitely helps, but you also like have to fill up a whole bowl of water. But if you're needing like your fruit or something to last longer, maybe you're going to the zoo or on a road trip. I will say like it got a lot of the air out. That's why I can't decide why I'm not shocked more. I just feel like the video I saw, it was like super, super airtight. This next hack probably has to be the most useful hack that I've probably ever shared during all of my hack videos. Now, maybe it's just my family. Maybe it's just an issue we have, <laughs> but as far as it goes for us, this is something that has been the biggest game changer since we found it. And I really hope it helps you with your family and your household. 
the hack I'm talking about is like the Brett saga. Like Chase always thinks you should wind it up and always put the twisty tie on it. Are you guys the twisty tie people? Or do you just wind it up and kind of tuck it over? Because I'll just like, when it gets about halfway, I just want to wind it, kind of fold it under, which I'll show you here in a second. And I feel like we're good to go. Chase doesn't care if there's like one slice left, you put the twisty tie on. Now kids are completely different. They just leave all the air in it. <laughs> they want to see how fast it can go bad. But I feel like there's finally a solution that you can compromise on and both people win. So let me show you the original way. This kind of goes back to like my hacks before like there's an original way and now there's a better way this is what I like to call the twist and tuck and it's probably what I do the most I think Savannah does it but she forgets to get the air out sometimes but I feel like this works but once again Chase wants the twisty tie which I just I'm too busy for this tie. So we both agreed on a solution because we found this reel. So let me show you what this one is. Boom. This one is super easy. You're gonna do the same twisting, get the air out of it, and then you're just gonna fold it back over itself. Then it's all within itself. The bread's gonna last longer. It's not gonna fall out. Um, I just, I feel like this just saved our marriage. <laughs> Does anybody else have issue with their bread? Or is it just the Till Vacuum household? Now we're gonna talk about a laundry hack because I feel like those are always super helpful. This is something I've been doing for years and I feel like it makes it easier on yourself and also whoever is living in the house. So sometimes we do laundry and it doesn't get put away immediately. I try to always put it away immediately, but sometimes we're busy and it doesn't. So what I like to do is have dirty hampers within the areas of the house that people use that only dirty clothes go into. So they'll bring me their dirty clothes. I throw them here in my washer. Soon as I empty out that hamper, I take it straight back to, we keep them in our bathrooms because that's where you normally get undressed and take a shower. So that's where we keep them. Then when I've switched the load, it's done drying, I have a clean laundry hamper. First off, I love that it doesn't um, cross contaminate, basically, it's like meat. <laughs> basically, your clean clothes aren't going into something where dirty clothes were, if that makes sense. So that's your first hack. But it also helps because if there's ever anything in this basket, Savannah and Chase know it's clean. They know they can fold it and put away. They can help me. They don't have to ask for it. They just know if it's in this bin, it's clean. So I feel like that's a two for one. And it just, it's good to have systems. Anytime you're like cleaning or organizing, anything like that, figure out a system and make it work. And for me, that's just worked really well. The third little bonus is typically while you're doing laundry, stuff still is getting dirty. So once again, as soon as I put it in the washer, I put it back in their area. Then if she takes a shower, if she's getting ready for the day, she still has that hamper to put her dirty clothes in. So they're never just like on the ground or thrown on the floor or in a bedroom. So definitely um, think about getting like a dirty hamper bin, but also a clean one as well. I wanna to touch on just a few more laundry hacks because I think they're very helpful. I've shared this before on my channel, but I wanna say it was during like a laundry tips video and not a home hacks, but it's helpful and so I feel like I need to share it again. Basically, when you're shopping or buying hampers, don't get the biggest one you can find. First off, they're hard to store, you never know where to put them, and then they hold too much. By the time it's full and you think it's time to do laundry, it's like two to three loads versus just one load. This is definitely the case with kids. So for Savannah's, there's two things or two reasons why I love this hamper. 
first off it's small I know she's not gonna bring me her hamper until it's like overflowing and she's crammed it in there but it's so small it'll still be one load by the time she brings it to me so it stops from having like load after load after load another reason I love it for kids and I found this at Ross just so you know it has wheels so if you have young kids and it may be too heavy for them to carry or it's just like a game and it's fun she'll take this and just roll it to me so she can run with it roll it she can put it down the hallway and just <laughs> sling it to me down the hallway as long as it gets to me I do not care and makes it a little bit easier for kids because of the weight and it's also just more entertaining so definitely next time you're in the market or if you're just having an issue keeping up with the laundry get smaller baskets I promise you it's gonna make a big difference the last and final hack we're gonna talk about today is how to make a room smell good especially if like dogs are in it so like my front bedroom my dogs love to hang out in there because they can see out the front window especially while we're gone they guard this house they make sure it's super nice and safe um, and i do have an air purifier so highly suggest that you can do essential oils there's candles there's so many different things but this was just a fun hack that i found that kind of works quickly this will work with different types of fans especially a box fan but i don't have one of those but i wanted to show you it works on like a standing fan as well so let me take you in there so i can show you how to do this one so you could get super creative with this. I'm gonna use a dryer sheet. If you have any smell that you like, maybe you have a non-toxic brand, maybe you have one of these and you'll put essential oils on it. But in here, I mentioned earlier, my boys love to hang out in here and it can get a little smelly. So we always have a fan on and say, I have someone coming over. I don't want it to smell like this. You can just put this on the back and basically it just holds it on. This one's a little bit big for this fan. But just like that, it's gonna hold it on and it's gonna push the smell into your room. Now I wouldn't do this if I was leaving the house or for long periods, but just if I need the room to smell good quickly, say I'm gonna come in here and clean things up or Savannah's gonna be staying in here, you can just throw it onto the back of a fan or a box fan and it's gonna push that smell into the room so that room smells better for whatever reason in my case it's my two very cute fur babies okay guys we're gonna go ahead and end it here so i can save the rest of the hacks for a future video once again if you see a hack you want me to test out live here on my channel definitely make sure you send me a dm over on instagram or email me somehow get it to me so i can test it out for you or if you have some great home hacks feel free to leave them down below in my comment section just so you can help everyone else out here that's on my channel inside those comments um thank you guys so much for making it until the end of today's video if you're new and you enjoyed this i'd love for you to hit that red subscribe button but i hope you guys have a wonderful week and i will see you in the next one bye so you gotta smash like subscribe click the links down below so i make a time comment say hi hit the bell so i know i'll see you next time smash like subscribe click the links down below so i make